When our speaker sat in 1978, where you graduates now sit, neither he nor his friends, nor I suspect his teachers or rectors would have imagined that he would someday deliver the commencement address to future graduates of the university and receive an honorary degree. <laughs> you, you don't know how funny that is. <laughs> Yet I believe those closest to him would have seen his passion, his strength of spirit, his talent for leadership, and his genuine love for his friends. They would have known his love for Notre Dame and all that it stands for, a love that has grown as he has become the parent of two Notre Dame graduates and a trustee of the universities. The qualities which define our speaker, passion, strength, leadership, and love, became evident to the whole world as he responded to the tragedy of 9-11 almost 20 years ago. Rather than telling that story, please view the video screen. We're back at 8 o'clock on this Tuesday morning. It's the 11th day of September 2001. You're looking at the people gathered outside our studio here. On a it was a beautiful day, but it was a, a cold a frost delay, I guess. And so we got out a little later, and I had played the first four holes that go pretty good. I think I was one under after four, and a man in a tie, USGA guy, came out and said, you have to go call your office. He said a plane hit the World Trade Center. Of the 171 Sandler O'Neill employees, 83 were in the South Tower. Only 17 made it out. The firm for all of us became a kind of a weapon. Well, our strategy is going to be what would Osama bin Laden not want us to do? I said, we're just going to do the absolute opposite. If your husband was just killed, what goes through your mind? The first thing that goes through your mind is your kids. The second thing is, how do I pay for it? So I said, OK, and I just tried to imagine. I said, all right, the first thing they can worry about is cash flow. So bang, we're going to pay them, obviously, through the end of the year, and we'll pay them bonuses that were greater than what they ever received. That's the short-term cash flow. Second thing they're going to worry about is benefits. So with the help of our CFO, I figured out how long that we could really stand to do it, and then I doubled it, because I just did. <laughs> and then was uh, education. And we started a foundation. And that was going to pay for all the education for their kids. It matters a lot to me. Because it's, the, it's their dads. It's their people exactly. who... And they're not there to fight for them. Right. And you are. Well, you got that right. Yeah. It was sad. It's still sad. We don't run from it. It's, it's part of who we are. We're proud of what we were before. We're proud of what we did. And we think they'd be proud of us, too. Class of 2021, in the past 14 months, life has thrown your way, trying circumstances and heartbreaking disappointments. I cannot think of a better speaker for this class than Jimmy Dunn, who faced daunting challenges and true heartbreak and prevailed. Class of 2021, I give you Jimmy Dunn. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Hey, uh, before I start, I've been around a campus the last couple of days, and it's been a lot of fun. I went up to a reception at a new dorm up there in the North Quad, which was pretty awesome. And I've had a, a bunch of seniors talk to me about, are you going to speak about interviewing and all those types of things? And, and I, I said, you know, I said, well, in the 11 minutes and 32 seconds that our esteemed chairman gave me to talk, I didn't have that in my, in my dissertation. But uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell a story because it, it was a good question. I should have thought of it. 
And uh, it's about a kid that I interviewed 25 years ago, Kevin Williams. And when you're going for an interview, you know, it's, it's never perfect, okay? So you all are used to getting A's, you're Notre Dame students, you're just exceptional. Perfect kind of leaves the building when you leave Notre Dame. No, nothing is perfect, okay? It's, it's a beautiful, messy, wonderful thing, but it's not perfect, all right? And it depends who you're interviewing, what you are. And anyway, this kid, Kevin Williams, had come in. And I didn't really know him. I had seen him. He was a caddy at the place I played. And he had a hustle to him. I liked him. His parents were both school teachers. He had kind of real blue-collar smarts. So I, I was attracted to this kid. And he came in. And, and so we started interviewing. What I like to do when I, interview, when I used to interview people is make them uncomfortable. Because I want to see how they act when things go wrong. And are they defensive? Do they get a little, you know, shot? And you know, what happens? And this kid was cool and collected, confident, didn't strike back. Also, he was a listener. You know, most people listen just to respond. You really want to listen to every word like your life depends on it. That's how he listened. And he was also a he had in his eyes this desire to succeed. It was like a refined desperation where I could just see how important it was to him. So net-net, I make decisions pretty quickly. I had seen him for about 32 minutes. I had seen enough. So I offered him a job right on the spot on the trading floor. And he, you know, he took the job right on the, right on the spot on the trading floor. And then now we leave the world of perfect, okay? So he says, you know, Mr. Dunn, I really appreciate it. I'm excited to come here. But I have a question for you. I said, no, you know, you got the job. Get out of here. But anyway, he, uh, you know, I said, well, maybe, maybe this guy isn't as smart as I thought, you know. And so, and I could be wrong. You know, I was wrong once a long time ago. But anyway, but, uh, but anyway, so I said, I said, okay, okay. I wouldn't do that, but fine. But what's your question? He said, well, I, I know you went to Notre Dame. I said, that's right. He said, you're a big supporter of Notre Dame. I said, that's correct. He said, well, you know, I went to Boston College. I said, yeah, well, you see, at Notre Dame, we can read. And so on your resume, it said Boston College. So I assumed you weren't lying on your resume. And he said, no, no, but that's not my point. Now it's getting less and less perfect, this interview. And I said, well, what is your point? And he says, well, I was accepted to Notre Dame, and I went to Boston College. And I just want to make sure that that's not going to hold me back here at Sandler. I said, all right, I said, listen, I have two things to tell you, OK? Number one, we're in the advice business, all right? We talk to clients. They're expecting us to be smart, to anticipate, to listen, okay? For your entire time at Sandler, you are not permitted to tell anyone that you were accepted to Notre Dame and you went to Boston College. I, exactly. I do not want to think, any, I don't want anybody telling, saying that Jimmy Dunn's hiring idiots here all of a sudden, all right? I said, and number two, all right, as far as well will affect you at Sandler, having the choice to go to Notre Dame and then going to Boston College, that will affect you every day the rest of your life wherever you go. <laughs> so forget about starting Monday. You need to start today, and you need to sit four feet from me because I have to watch you closer than I thought. <laughs> anyway, he, he did start, and he was the terrific guy. There's a whole other part of the story, but... Uh, and by the way, I don't, uh, I don't want to hear from the, I don't want to load the gun, as my son says, Seamus. I'm not loading the gun for the Boston College haters, by the way. I had three, four sisters, three that went to Boston College, two great brother-in-laws, and I always root for Boston College as long as their interests do not come in conflict with Notre Dame's interests. So that doesn't count as my time because that's the way it went. So now I got to get to my 11 minute and 32 seconds. We, we have a tough chairman here.
It, it was a while ago, but thank you, Father John, for that, those kind, it was awful, that awfully nice introduction. I am honored to be with you, my fellow trustees, our faculty, family, and friends, and most of all, the Notre Dame class of 2021. To my new fellow alumni, well done and congratulations. You've achieved something great, and no one does this alone. Think of it. You are here, surrounded by friends, celebrating success with family. They're the ones who built you up, protected, and prayed for you all the way through. It's a perfect moment to honor and thank the parents and the families of Class of 21. One of our many traditions at Notre Dame is that when there is a new president of the United States, usually they come and speak at our commencement. So you all had that to look forward to. And yet, after all this class has endured, the daily health checks, the mask wearing, limited social interaction, no tailgating, the football atmosphere not the same. The presidential tradition gets snatched away from you. Instead, you end up with me. I'm sorry, but it's just not your year. Although, on the plus side, I noticed that the bookstore basketball hoops have been returned. About time, that's good. Alumni Hall can, remains the center of the universe. And we beat Clemson in this building. At 2 o'clock this morning, I was at the Morris Inn, bathed in sweat, as I thought just how this would go. But it puts me at ease to have my own family here. My wife, Susan, my daughter Jacqueline, who is studying in Paris and wears her Notre Dame bomber jacket all around the city. Here's Jackie. And our sons, Seamus from the class of 16 and CJ from the class of 19. You can clap them, they're nice people. They put up with me. It's comforting as well to see so many old friends, including my fellow honoree, Tom Burrish. Tom graduated summa and, as provost, elevated our academic standards to where they are today. I graduated without distinction, although, as manager of the senior bar, I did elevate its profitability. <laughs> Enough to say that Tom and I have left our mark on campus in different ways. After graduating, I wasn't done with Notre Dame. The problem was Notre Dame was done with me. I applied to law school, but got rejected. So you can imagine how sweet it is to receive, finally, this honorary doctorate of law thing. And, and Marcus Coles would have let me in, I'll guarantee it. I, if, he was, if he was chairman, I would have gotten in. But, uh, and congrats on all the good work you're doing, Marcus, wherever you are. All right. You, you'll be relieved to learn that I'm not here to lay out life's path for you. This won't be the gospel according to Jimmy Dunn. You'll, you'll choose your own way because that's part of life, figuring out things for yourself. All I can offer is some of my own experiences. They explain what we owe to this university and what anyone stands to gain from the lifetime gift of a Catholic education. Some of my experiences were pretty raw, and it is still difficult to talk about them. Forgive me, it's impossible for me to speak about 9-11 and my alma mater without getting emotional. I don't want anyone to feel awkward. I have done this before, never like in a stadium with 20,000 people, but I mean, I, I have done this before, okay? And don't, just stay with me, all right? I'll get through it. If you like the cool, clinical detachment in people, I'm not that guy. 
but bear with me and we'll get through this together. Try to remember how you first ever heard about Notre Dame. Me, it was, I remember the exact moment. I was six years old and I had a lot of friends that went to public school. My parents sent me to St. Joseph's Grammar School in Babylon, which cost them $5 a month. Remember those days, parents? Okay. It seemed like a lot of money to me. So I asked my mother, why not send me to public school and save the five bucks? She sat me down and said, Jimmy, your dad has worked very hard. We can afford this. And if we can't, we'll find a way. Even if I have to clean the floors of Grand Central Station. I know she would have done it because that's what a Catholic education for her children meant to my mother. And I asked her if that went for college as well. And she said, absolutely. And the finest college in the country is Notre Dame. My mother had conviction. You're right. Give Notre Dame an applause. It is the finest country. I don't want to hear what all these other people talk about. I've been here a long time. Notre Dame is the finest school in the country. I'm not interested in any empirical data, OK? My mother was right, and that's the end of the story. Where did I go now? OK, my, my mother had conviction. It turns out she didn't live quite long enough to see that I got accepted here. But she was right. And almost 47 years since, it's only, almost been 47 years since the day I pulled up in front of Alumni Hall. So many times in my thought, I've thanked both of them for setting me in this direction. I hope you can recall who planted Notre Dame in your mind, because whoever that was, that person did you a wonderful favor. Start with the enduring friendships we take with us when it's time to leave here. I've always felt myself surrounded by truly good people in a way that doesn't repeat itself in other times and places. I mean the kind of friends who lift you up and prove your game. As a rule, when I think of my Notre Dame friends, I think of integrity, dependability, loyalty, kind-heartedness, and with all that, a million laughs along the way. How lucky can you get to fall in the company like that? At Notre Dame, it's practically guaranteed. In fact, my roommates are here today. Rich Riley, Stan Zurl, John Coyne, and looking down from heaven, our beloved Jim Martin. The mark of a great university is let you learn more than their teaching. Here we talk about forming the whole person. And it's in a true commitment grounded in real things, permanent things. The aim is character, not just knowledge. Moral aspiration, not just ambition. You've all got degrees in different disciplines, but you have a single major in common, and that is leadership. The fashions that wash over higher education don't get far at this university. Our goal is an independent mind in the service of truth instead of fads and groupthink. The great problems and moral obligations of life are not suddenly discovered here. Those obligations have been the core purpose from the start. If you've got a Notre Dame degree, then the cause of justice, the hurts, the needs, the wrongs in the world should never come as news to you. Notre Dame is here to inspire leaders of conscience. And in my lifetime, never before has that leadership been more important than it is today, and you're the ones that are going to provide it. It, it is rare. I'm on the clock. I didn't, I didn't factor in any applause, so we got to... It's going to hurt my 11 minutes, 39 seconds here, okay? It is rare that just the name of a university can say so much. When someone is called a Notre Dame person, it means they're solid, reliable, up to the job. You can count on them. Everyone in this class has been prepared in more ways than you know. And you'll often go back to that foundation of character, only more when things get hard, and they will. 
Father Jenkins touched upon what happened at our company on 9-11. We faced the passage through the dark side of life, the kind no one is ever ready for. So many colleagues gone at once. Wives, husbands, children left to suffer loss and to find a way to keep going. Normally I would have gone to my straight to my two, my, my two partners I knew best, but we had lost them too. The question is how do we recover and more than that, what can we do for those families left behind? At such moments, there isn't time to reflect and figure out what you believe. All you have is your foundation, and you're about to find out if it's a good one. If you can get through, it's going to be on the strength of what you have already. How we conducted ourselves would define who we were and what we stood for. If we were, on, if we were not honorable, then we stood for nothing. So our attitude was, we're going to make brave decisions. If we fail, we fail. If we lose everything, we lose everything. But that's what we're going to do, especially for the children of our friends. They had lost a person in their lives who would fight for them. So from now on, we would fight for them. We would keep faith with those families. I'm sure I could have done some things better. But, at the, but as I closed my eyes at the end of each day, I knew I had given it my all. We, we set up scholarships. That's okay. Thank you. We set up scholarships. And this year, several more of those young men and women are graduating from college. Colin Farrell from Syracuse. Margaret Smith from Cornell. Brendan Fitzpatrick from the aforementioned Boston College, which, by the way, is where his dad went, and his dad and I had a lot of fun going back and forth over the years. He was a heck of a guy. And Robert Wright from Villanova. And there's one more. A close friend of mine who died on September 11th was an outstanding man named Kevin Karate. He was a superstar at our company, and, and was always giving other people encouragement. Kevin had two sons and a daughter, and they have a great mother. One of those boys, Kyle, graduated from here three years ago. The other is graduating today. Your classmate, Sean Patrick Karate. Stand up. In fact, Lori and Megan and Kyle and Sean, stand up wherever you are. And Lori, you stand up too. You're the one wherever you are. Congrats. For a company once located on the 104th floor of Two World Trade Center, nothing is ever the same. The aftermath never quite ends. And we all learn that this is the deal in life. You won't, it won't always be fair, but you take it as it is. Along with the good experiences, there's no way around the tough ones. But I'm here to tell you this. In the days after 9-11, I had convictions to follow. I know, where my, I know where that foundation was built. As unready as I felt in the time of trial, what I most needed were the things that Notre Dame provided me. A great author once said that if this institution didn't exist, we would have to create it. Because there is a wisdom and a spirit here that the world needs more of. At times in your life, you'll discover that you're stronger and more persevering than you ever thought possible. You'll recognize how much of a product of this school you really are. Whenever you hold yourself to the highest standard instead of just the latest one, doing the right thing instead of just the easy thing, you'll be putting into practice what you've learned here. And as you grow in faith, aware of life's greater purposes and of the whose purposes they are, you will see that too as a gift from Notre Dame. This school will always be here for you a home base for the rest of your life. I come back often, and this morning I paid my usual visit to the grotto. 
I promise you. The feeling of going there is, is something you never outgrow. But, but for me, the high point of this return to campus has nothing to do with nostalgia. It is the view from where I'm standing right now. What a joy it is to see the work of four years completed in the form of such impressive, outward-looking, talented, true-hearted men and women. It almost makes me feel bad for the president because he missed this wonderful sight of a graduating class as promising as any in America. You've earned all the happiness of, the day, of this day. I wish you went many more just like it. Thank you, good luck, Godspeed to the class of 21, and go Irish. <laughs>